little bit. Yeah. Get know what it's like, you know. Uh huh. You're on. Okay. First of all, tell me the date. Do you remember the date you entered the MTC? Um, it was April, I think, twenty first of two thousand ten. Okay. Yeah. Do we need them to go out in the hall? Do you think? Guys. Yeah. <coughs> so uh, here's how it's gonna. I'm gonna do this, Tyler, because it's basically gonna be you talking and not me during the story. So okay. I'm just gonna say the Senate or say something, and you repeat it, and then just, just add on to it. it. Yeah, okay. okay. I received. Well, here's what I want you to do. I want want you to answer when and to where. Okay. So I received my mission call. Okay. Like the date. Yeah. So just say I received my mission call on, in. Okay. Is that what, January or something? It's February. February of 2010, and you mm -hmm. just tell us where you got called. So start out with, I received my mission call. I received my mission call in February of 2010, and I got called to the Quezon City, Philippines mission. When I read I was going to the Philippines, I? Uh, when I read I was going to the Philippines, I, um, I was very shocked at first, um, but I felt like uh, it was the right place for me. How tough was that language? Oh, it was so tough. Was it really? Yeah. Oh, that does sound it tough. It was really tough. The biggest adjustment on my mission was? Um, the biggest adjustment on my mission was probably adjusting to a new culture, a new language, uh, different people. And I, I really had to learn to, to, to love these people and, and adjust to their culture, learn the language. And, um, but it was the greatest experience of my life. Being away from basketball for two years was? Uh, being away from basketball for two years um, was, was difficult at the start because, I mean, that's what I grew up doing every day. And so it, it was definitely a big change. But um, I, I felt like uh, my mission, I mean, you can't get that experience any other way. And I, I'm so grateful that I, I gave up those two years. In the Philippines, I played basketball, and if you could say maybe how often and with whom. Mm -hmm. uh, in the Philippines, I played basketball uh, almost every week, and and really every day when you're walking around, there, there's a there's a basketball hoop uh, almost on every street. Little kids playing, and so when they see a big white American walking around, they just th will throw you the ball and tell you to shoot it or dunk it. Um, and so, uh, like I'd shoot every once in a while. But we, we'd usually get a bunch of members together on preparation day and play just at the church. The Filipino people taught me? The Filipino people taught me how to be happy. Um, they don't have a lot. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of them um, live in poor circumstances, but they're the happiest people I've ever met. And uh, they really taught me uh, how to be happy. Gosh, that's a great lesson, isn't it? Mm -hmm. The scariest thing that happened to me on my mission was? The scariest thing that happened to me while I was on my mission was probably uh, when I got bit by a dog. Um, I, was at, I was at a member's house. We were getting the key uh, to go to the church, and um, they let their dog out, and he, I, I was standing right in, front of their, right in front of their door, and he just ran out and got me. I didn't have any time to run. Uh, and my companion, of course, r was out of there. He didn't help me at all. But that was probably one of the scarier moments. Did you have to have stitches or anything? Did, it, did have, it break the skin? Uh, yeah, it did. I didn't have to have stitches, but I did get rabies shots. Oh, my gosh. I heard that is so painful. Yeah, it was is a that... huge needle. And just it was... one, or isn't it a series? No, it's a series. Oh, it was my like God. I had to go back, I think, five times. Oh, wow. Yeah, was that hurt. early on, or was that? Uh, that was in my first area. I was, oh, wow. I was probably oh, yeah. there. I'd probably been there a couple months. Now, did you tell your mom, or did you wait? Uh, I waited okay. <laughs> for a little while. <laughs> That's important to us mothers. <laughs> the greatest thing that happened on my mission was? The greatest thing that happened on my mission um, was probably just uh, interacting with the Filipino people and seeing how uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ can can help and, and bless their life. Um, I saw I was able to teach lots of families and, and help families progress together. And, and I think that was a big blessing to, to see how um, the gospel doesn't only bless you know, each individual, but uh, you collectively as a family. That's great. 
What was the best lesson you learned by serving a mission for two years? Um, the best lesson that, that I learned while um, serving a mission for two years was, uh, I'm going to say a few lessons. Um, one was I, I felt like I grew closer to my Savior more than I ever had in my whole life. And I, I learned how, um, how to feel the Spirit and how to respond to its promptings. Um, and, and then also I, I learned how to um, uh, feel the, the love of Christ and help others feel that, feel that love. Um, and those are two lessons that I'll, I'll take with me for the rest of my life. After I returned this past April, right? Mm -hmm. After I returned this past April, I first picked up a basketball. Um, after I returned from my mission in April, I, I first picked up a basketball probably the next day after I got back. My, my little brother, who, who grew about a foot when I was on my mission, wanted to get out and play me. Uh, but, you know, I didn't play him for a couple months, but I, I went out and shot around, and so I, it, was, it was fun. Did I read you did more conditioning? to get ready instead of not necessarily playing the game, but just getting your mm -hmm. legs ready specifically? Yep. Okay. Yeah, the first couple of months, I, I just hit the weights hard and tried to get my legs back. Uh, the biggest influence of my father has been? Um, the biggest influence of my father um, on me has, has probably been just his support and his, his um, interest in, in my life. Um, he's always been there since I was a little kid and um, always been that mentor and that helper in every phase of my life. My success, oh, I see, my mission helped me on the court by? My mission helped me on the court um, by teaching me how to, how to work together uh, with people. Um, you know, as a missionary, you're together with someone 24-7, and so uh, it, it doesn't matter if you're way different or you don't, you don't like that person. Like, you, you got to make it work, and you got to try and be happy. And so I, I think that that's helped me in basketball, working together with a team. Um, and, and also leadership, you know, I, I had some leadership opportunities in my mission and um, that's, that's definitely helped me in basketball. My success early on this season is due to? Um, my success early on this season um, is due to, I think just hard work and, um, and my mental preparation uh, to every game. I, I try and treat every game the exact same, and um, and I put in, I put in lots of time in the summer to to get here. The team this year is. Uh, the team this year is I, I feel like is a special group of guys, and uh, we still have lots of things to to prove this season. Uh, we've done some good things, and and we've had our struggles too. But uh, it's a long season, and we just got to keep getting better. The way I hope to help the team the next few years is by? Uh, the way I, I hope to help the team these next few years is by uh, leading by example and, and helping everyone um, contribute to the team to, to be the best that we can be. Perfect. Thanks, Tyler. Right, Appreciate yeah. it. I know. Tell me when. Three, two, and one. Yeah. Maybe not. Three, two, and one. In April of 2010, Tyler Haas entered the doors here at the Missionary Training Center in Provo following a very successful freshman season. You would leave basketball for two years, gosh. Three, two, and one. You ready? Yep. Three, two, one. In April of 2010, Tyler Haas entered the doors here at the Missionary Training Center in Provo following a very successful freshman season. He would leave basketball for two years to preach the gospel. We recently sat down with Tyler to talk about the impact of his mission and the red hot start to his sophomore year. Cha-ching! After 12 times, should we do a back up or are we good? Uh, let's try. Okay, tell me what. Ready? Three, two, one. In April of 2010, Tyler Haas entered the doors here at the Missionary Training Center in Provo after a very successful freshman season. He would leave the game of basketball for two years to preach the gospel. We recently sat down with Tyler to talk about the impact of his mission and the red-hot start to his sophomore year. Woohoo! 